Um, so, but you know, if they can survive with a healthy Reggie Wayne, as you said, and Dallas Clark maybe filling in, Peyton Manning always loves Dallas Clark. I think it, it, it'll be close for them, but I think if not the division, they'll get a wild card. Not a very good opening weekend for the uh, for the AFC South. They go one and three, obviously in the opener on Thursday night. The Tennessee Titans dropped a, a heartbreaker to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, another team that's supposed to be much improved in the AFC South, the Houston Texans. Uh, the feature game on CBS today against Mark Sanchez and the New York Jets. The Houston Texans did not play well either offensively, neither offensively nor defensively. Uh, one of the big stats in this game: the Jets were ten for eight on third down. Uh, Mark Sanchez grew for 272 yards. I'd like to get your opinion on Mark Sanchez. Well, you can go. First. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's he has the ability to be like those quarterbacks like Flacco and Ryan, like they did last year. He he definitely fits that profile coming from USC. You know that quarterback that everybody thinks is going to be that next great guy, as we saw Carson Palmer come out, and you know Matt Leinart. Although maybe Carson Palmer has been the the best one to come out of those three, and the other guys kind of you know, middle-of-the-road guys, but every time you have that high profile coming out of USC, it's big, and I think he really is going to be up there like Flacco and Ra Matt Ryan were last year, but as you said, the, the, the Texans, everybody thought this year might be their breakout year to make the playoffs. They couldn't have played any worse than they did today. And perhaps their feature weapon, uh, Steve Slayton, did not run the ball very well. We're now going to go to uh, Cool All for our uh, commentary. Fun. Hi everyone, I'm Kudal Singh, back with the commentary. Let me tell you about what I think is going to happen in the baseball races. Let's start with the AL East. Let's face it, the Yankees have this wrapped up. No one knows what will happen in the postseason, but the Yankees are due and the odds are on the favorites to win the World Series. The Red Sox will win the wild card, and this time lose to the Anaheim Angels. So the Yankees will play the Angels in the ALCS. I know that breaks a lot of hearts in Red Sox Nation, but the Yankees are beasts, even though I hate them. Okay, let's talk about the National League. The defending world champions, the Philadelphia Phillies, made their pitching staff even stronger with Pedro Martinez and Cliff Lee. This time, the Phillies go into the playoffs as the favorites. I think the wild card comes out to the NL West, and surprise, surprise, it's the fading L.A. Dodgers. The Rockies will catch them in the NL West. That means the Cardinals will win the NL Central. In the NLCS, the Phillies will take on the Cardinals, and it will go into a six-game series, and the Cardinals will prevail because their combination of pitching and hitting is sick. I mean, Adam Wainwright, Chris Carpenter, and Ryan Franklin out of the bullpen is just too tough a combination. Albert Pujols and Yadier Molina will make the cards the NL champs. In the World Series, it's the Yankees and the Cardinals, and the teams are almost symmetrical. That means the same. So, who wins? The Cardinals win because Alex Rodriguez always chokes in the postseason, and the Cardinals have better pitching. That's how I see it unfolding baseball down the stretch. For why I say sports, I'm Kudal Singh, and I'm back. Now over to Chris, to John in the back talk segment. John? Ladies and gentlemen, Kudal is back, and uh, we're going to take Kudal's uh, segment entryway here. We're going to talk about baseball, guys. Uh, not a lot has changed the past week, except for the NL wild card. The San Francisco Giants had been in the dogfight with, uh, with the Colorado Rockies in the wild card. But at the top of the day, they were five and a half out. They had a very rough series with the Dodgers at home. Things look to be shaping up now for the playoff race. Do you guys see anything changing from the norm before we head into October? I think it'll. I, I agree with you. I think it'll mainly stay the same because there's not much. As close, I wouldn't even say it's that close. I mean, they're just. It's shaping up, as you said. You can't really put it any different than that. The way it's coming out and it's coming to look at is that you have the Yankees, the Tigers, the Angels, and the Red Sox. The, the Rangers aren't giving up. The Rangers could come in there, but the Rays are even falling back, even though they, now they lost Carlos Pena. And the same thing in the NL. I mean, the, the Giants looked like they could be, even if they made it, a real strong team with Lincecum and Kane at the top of their rotation. Zito as well. Zito, and now with Penny pitching the way he is, the new arrival. So, I mean, that they just kind of dropped out. They, they really haven't performed, and then Lincecum missed his start. It almost seems like everything just piled on top, and they couldn't handle it at that time. And, you know, the Rockies going on the tear as they have been since May, late May. So 
I think everything will just shape up as the same, so it should be. But it should be interesting if we do have any surprises or anything lately. I mean, um, you mentioned Brad Penny now a new accusation of the Giants. I think right now the Giants have to look forward into the next year because the only thing, the best thing they could hope for, really, I think, seeing in, until the end of going into October, is they gain a few games on, in the Rockies. But I really think the Rockies are going to get this wild card, um, and depending on how the Giants. Um, going into their next series. I mean, if they're able to win a few series, maybe, and if the Rockies going to slump. Otherwise, I think they're going to ha- um, take this momentum and be strong next year and um, become a better team and look look on from the season, seeing how well they did this you, year. You bring up the point that the Colorado Rockies should be good next year. Consistency has been the biggest problem no. for the Colorado Rockies over the past year. They win the World, they, they go to the World Series in 2007, and then they don't come close to making the playoffs last year. This year it appears they're going to make the playoffs. And you, you think they can be just as good as they are this year next year? No, I'm, I'm talking about the Giants. You're talking about the Giants. Excuse me. It's okay. <laughs> I'm, thinking that, I'm thinking that the Giants will, I think they could either do the same as they did this year or do even better and actually make the playoffs. Um, hopefully they can do that. I think if they build and work on what they got this year, I think they can easily the, do the that. The Giants are building around their, their two young stars, okay. Lincecum and Kane, pitching uh, offenses. Uh, since Barry Bonds has left on, offensively, the Giants have struggled a little bit. Who's the one guy you think will step up and lead that team offensively? Whoever um, they uh, get in the in the off season, I think that's what they really they do in the off season is get a really big hitter and a really um, strong offensive power hitter, and that's what they need to look for during the off season. Right, because they do have the foundation to build. They have uh, Kung Fu Panda, Pablo I was, Sandoval. I was just gonna say, I think they have that yeah. main have building block, Kung Fu Panda, as you said, the, the Pablo <laughs> Sandoval. Yeah. The, that guy is just, he's he's just amazing, and he's not your tip prototypical. Sluggo, where he's huge and he's taking the right. steroids. He's he got, has fun. He's got, yeah, he's he's kind of got the Prince Fielder build a little bit, and it, and it's fun to see guys like that come up that have that raw power. They don't have to come in and you know use the steroids or spend twenty hours a day in the gym. They can come out and they have that raw ability, that raw power to just hit home, hit deeper runs. And he even has that Vladimir Guerrero right. look in him that. He can hit any pitch. Right, he swims at everything. Yeah, he swims at anything, and there is, it almost seems as there is nothing he can't hit with that as he, well. And he, he has 25 for months around that, so I mean, I don't think I've seen anybody bar. of late who plays the game having as much fun as Pablo Sandoval does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in the American League, the Red Sox have pu- are beginning to pull away from the uh, from the Texas Rangers to secure the wild card. If they do indeed secure the wild card, it appears that they'll be playing the New York Yankees in the playoffs. Nothing is more fun than a Red Sox-Yankees postseason series. If, in fact, this does come to fruition, who do you see uh, per- uh, persevering in that series? Um, I predict the Red Sox. Um, I think the Red Sox will have the stronger team going in since they've been able to pull away from the Rangers. Uh, I think they've had they've been more consistent throughout the games. They haven't had any big losses or big wins they've just been consistent with winning while the Yankees you've noticed in their past few games they had a big loss to the Orioles and then they crushed the Orioles the next day and that shows just inconsistency throughout the team and also it matters pitching matchup also like the Yankees have a few good starters and then they get weaker so if it becomes a seven games uh, a deeper series I think the Red Sox um, will win it but it, the Yankees have to win the first few games if they want to win this series. Oh, yeah. I mean, you definitely bring up a lot of great points because I, I think, like anything, it would be a, it'd be a great and another historic matchup, especially with these two teams. These two teams are great yet again with the additions the Yankees made before. And, you know, the Red Sox, the last couple of years, they've, they've stayed the same, but they've made it deep into the playoffs, and they've had that run. And as, as a lot of people have said and experts have said, they are built for the postseason. The right. Red Sox are built. So They're, I think... If they get into the postseason, I don't think. I, I mean, I, you have to give it to the Red Sox because I, I just don't trust that Yankee rotation with CC Sabathia, AJ Burnett. They've never really been, right. and even Jabba. He, this would be his first major going deep in the postseason because none of them have performed late in the season or in the postseason, including A Rod for the offense. So you, you never know with the Yankees. They're a great team in the regular season, but if you don't perform when it counts in the postseason, it, it doesn't do you any good. Right. And one of those experts that you speak of is uh, former Red Sox radio announcer Jerry Crupriano. Talking about the return of Daisuke Matsuzaka to the Red Sox rotation, our, our fellow back talkers caught up with Jerry this morning. Well, if I knew that, I'd go out and get me a lottery ticket right now because the guy has been a disappointment this year. 
terrific last.